Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. So um, thank you for having me. So this, uh, this is me. Uh, five years ago, I'm standing at a fancy lawyer's office, and I've just sold my, my business partners and my family's company to one of the largest corporations in the world. Um, a Fortune 500 New York Stock Exchange listed American giant. Can you believe my luck? Huh? Yet all I could feel in that very moment, you can almost see it, and for time to come, was emptiness. And um, I realized how that sounds, but the truth is I wasn't feeling very well. So I decided that my next business, I wanted to go out and build something truly meaningful. And in that endeavor, I was super lucky to get to know my two co-founders, Henrik and Mikkel, both uh, medical doctors by background, but above all, visionaries. And together, we decided to think big. Healthcare, lots of problems, but also lots of opportunities. I mean, you read about this every day in the newspaper. It's a shortage of hospital beds, patients lying in hospitals, risking confusion and infection, healthcare industry workers running away from the industry altogether. We do everyday course like banking and grocery shopping from our living room, but what if high acuity inpatient care could undergo the same type of transformation. The numbers speak for themselves. So 10 million is the shortage of healthcare workers in just a couple of years. A third of these precious clinicians' time are spent on things other than clinical work. And 25% of patients do not even belong in the hospital. So I said, with was going to think big, and, and we did. So we set out to build the world's largest hospital. But instead of using brick and mortar, we would leverage technology, ambulating care teams, in order to treat patients in their homes instead. So basically, the acutely ill patients get to be treated where they're absolutely most comfortable. So the model is digi-physical. So on the one hand, there's physical visits by nurses and doctors into the homes where the interventions are made. On the other side, digital consultations to create that virtual hospital. As you can imagine, these are very sick patients that were treated, treating, so obviously they need 24-7 monitoring. In our high acuity command center based in the hospital. We can monitor those patients. We can work with the resources to make sure we create an optimal patient experience. If you look at the services that we're offering, and probably it will come as no surprise to anyone uh, here that uh, this will be a very, very big shift for hospitals. And hospitals, they're known for many things but the rapid pace of innovation and adoption to new things is not one of them. So what we do is firstly we offer services, basically change management, experience know-how, and even providing clinical resources if needed, if that is the bottleneck for the hospitals to get there. Secondly, our proprietary technology platform, a high acuity hospital at home platform where the monitoring, the planning, the communication of all of this is taken care of. And thirdly, but not lastly, and one that is easy to forget, the third party services that happens around the hospital. So basically, how do you get portable ultrasound into a patient's home? How do you work with the easier stuff like food or cleaning? All of that is coordinated through our platform. Another way of looking at it might be the end-to-end -end patient journey, which is what you're seeing here. So let's take me as an example. Let's say I'm in my home, I fall to the floor, and I'm being rushed into the hospital with an ambulance. I'm eventually diagnosed with heart infarction, and my doctor tells me as I'm stabilizing that we need to continue the care through uh, medical interventions or uh, intravenous medicines, checkup of the hearts, blood tests, etc. I'm also being told that if I wish and if I consent to that, I can continue the hospital treatment, but in my home. And if so, I'm taken there by the Medoma cars and in the home I'm met by a hospital, but in my home, with a new setup of care and with technology to enable all of that. 
basically every morning I have my tablet, I measure my vital parameters, I know exactly when I will be visited by a doctor or by a nurse, if it's digital or if it's physical. This is what we call the Medoma care application. We also have our Medoma Go application, which is obviously the ambulating care staff that are going around in town to different patients and their way of knowing when to get where and what and why and what to bring at, in what order. And thirdly, but not lastly, obviously what we touched upon, our surveillance center. The planning, the execution and the resource planning in order to make all of this complex care episode work. We find this to be pretty amazing, obviously, but you should not just take our word for it. I want you to meet um, Gunilla. So Gunilla, she's the head of the Department of Internal Medicine at St. Göran's Acute Hospital, one of the largest acute hospitals in Sweden. And she loves what we are doing for her patients. And I'm going to be honest, if, if she didn't, I wouldn't put her up here on, on the big screen. And I understand why she loves it, because what we do, we've now treated over 350 patients this way saving thousands of care days in an already strained healthcare system. 2.2 is the daily visits of these physicians into the home compared to multiples of that in the hospital as the doctors and nurses are running back and forth into uh, the physical ward. And I think most importantly, 70 different diagnoses we've treated once and for all disapproving the uh, wrongful idea that this type of services only can be conducted at a narrow set of diagnoses. When you're building a company like this, and if you want to get to the heart of changing healthcare, then you really need key decision makers on board, obviously. We're talking about politicians, regulatory bodies, media, healthcare executives, etc. And we're super proud that in our journey that's been going on for two years, we managed to achieve just that. This is a picture of my co-founder, Henrik, together with the Sweden's Minister of Health, Akwan Kabai, discussing exactly how the future of healthcare can look like. How about patients then, you must ask? What do they think? Well, they love it. So for those of you familiar with the NPS framework, our current NPS among the patients sits at 93, which is quite unbelievable. Employees, then, we're talking about the employees that need to come back to the industry. Well, they love it too. And this is maybe even better as we need to track the society, healthcare workers back into the industry, and this provides a new way for them to come back. North Korean numbers, as someone said. So what now, you might wonder? Well, I told you in the beginning that I wasn't feeling all well after having sold my company, but that is no longer the case. I want you to look at that happy face in the beginning. And um, this is truly an amazing journey to be part of, and we want you to be part of it too. Maybe as future employees, investors, or maybe just join our fan club. The only thing we do not want you to do is that you need to join us as a patient. Thank you. <laughs>